On number five, it says a distant star is traveling toward the Earth with a speed of 36,500 kilometers per second, but what factor is the frequency of light emitted by this star changed? All right, so anytime something is moving towards you, you know that the wavelength is going to be shorter and the frequency is going to be higher. So uh, maybe here's where the Earth is, and here's where the star is, and if it were just stationary, then the light coming off of there might look like that. Versus if the star is coming at you, now the light coming off of there is going to be small wavelength like this uh, and higher frequency. Okay, so what frequency would you observe? Well, the equation that will help you with this is the frequency you observe is the frequency that was produced, fs, times 1 plus the velocity of the source divided by the speed of light. Now, that's the same equation you'd use if it were going away from you. It would just be a minus instead of a plus. Now, the factor that the frequency is uh, changed is uh, this part right here. And so, really, the, that uh, binomial is what they're asking for. And so, that's 1 plus, and now that was 36,500 kilometers per second. So, I'll make that times 10 to the third meters per second all over the speed of light 3 times 10 to the eighth meters a second. Now you go ahead and put that into your machine and you end up getting uh, 1.12167, significant figure wise, 1.122 times the frequency that was produced is the frequency that you'll observe. Number 6 and number 45 are essentially the same thing, so let's do them together. It says a source of light is, with a frequency fs moves toward an observer. How does the frequency of light measured by the observer compared to the frequency that was produced? It is the frequency of the source. Well, we know that it's going to be higher. Again, here's the Earth, and here's something that produces light, like maybe a star. If it's if it's not moving towards you, the light that it's going to produce is going to have a certain wavelength and then a certain frequency goes along with that. If the star is actually moving, though, the waves in front of it are going to get bunched up, and so it's going to look more like that, and the wavelength is going to be small, and any time the wavelength is small, the frequency is large because the two of them have to multiply to the speed of light, which is going to be the same in both of these cases. So this big wavelength is going to be coupled with a smaller frequency, and this small wavelength is going to be coupled with a bigger frequency. And so how does the frequency compare? It's bigger. Eleven's a neat one. It's good for you math lovers. A uh, source of light moves in a circle with a speed v source of half the speed of light. So when the source is moving directly towards you, the frequency is f1. When the source is moving directly away from you, the frequency is f2. Uh, find that ratio. Okay, so how about we say here's our observer, and this is uh, you know, some kind of ball of light, and it's going to move around in a circle, okay, and it has that, that speed c divided by 2 everywhere. Now, right here, it's moving right at you. So let's call that situation one. And it's producing a certain frequency, but you're perceiving frequency one, which you know from the last example is higher. Now over here, it's moving away from you. And so there it is, same speed, but now this time moving away from you. Let's call that situation two, and you're going to perceive uh, frequency two. Now frequency two is less because it is going away from you. Okay, so they want to know what what is that ratio. Okay, so frequency 1 could be calculated by the frequency of the source, which is the same everywhere, times 1 plus the velocity of the source divided by the speed of light, versus frequency 2, it's the same calculation, except it has a minus because it's going away from you. Now, they want me to do F1 over F2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide those two things. Now, first off, you notice that the frequency of the source cancels out, and that's going to say that frequency 1 over frequency 2, well, that's going to be equal to this uh, 1 plus the velocity of the source. Remember, they told us that was C over 2, 
and then one minus the velocity of the source again that's c over two still over c like this okay uh, can i clean this up a little bit yeah the c the c in each numerator denominator are going to cancel out so that numerator is one plus a half one and a half the denominator is one minus a half 0.5 and you can clean that up in your head it's going to be three and so that frequency that you observe when it's coming at you is going to be three times higher than the frequency that you observe when it's going away from you. On number 46, a similar one to the last one, source of light moves with a constant speed in a circular path. So let's, let's make it ball of light again. And it's going around in a circle, and here you are observing it someplace over here. It says when the source is moving directly toward you, the, freq the observed frequency is F1. So let's say that's situation one and you observe frequency one, which is going to be bigger than what was produced. When it is uh, moving directly away from you, that's going to be down here. Same speed, but now moving directly away from you. Let's call that situation two, and you observe frequency two, and it's going to be much smaller. Okay, it says if the ratio of frequency one over frequency two is equal to two. So that means when I divide these two things, I get two. That uh, when it's coming at me, I notice twice as much frequency as when it's going away from me. Uh, how fast is this thing moving around here? Okay, well, similar to the way I approached that last one, I'm gonna say that frequency one is the produced frequency times one plus the velocity of the source over the speed of light and frequency two is the frequency of the source one minus the velocity over the speed of light like this and i'm going to divide those two things and a couple things the frequency of the source is going to cancel out and they told me that this ratio of f1 to f2 is going to be two so now can i clean this up one plus vs over c in the numerator one minus vs over c in the denominator how about I cross multiply and I'll make it uh, two times that denominator or two minus two vs over c equals one plus vs over c like that. Uh, clean up a little bit farther. Well, I have uh, two vs over c is on the left and I got one of them on the right. So how about I take that over and I'll have uh, three vs over c's on the right and I have that one on the right and I'll take it over and it'll make it one and so then i can see that my vs is going to be c over three 